Look at that cute little roll. Look at that cute little roll. Oh my God. I need you to need it. Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? It's Liam Mouse Vlog, Liam Mouse Vlog, it's Liam Mouse's Vlog. Hello, children of Earth. Greetings, Earthlings. Live long and prosper, I guess. I've decided tonight, JJ had to work tonight. It's a weird night, normally he's home tonight. But he had to work, and that makes me sad. So what I've decided to do with my time is make cinnamon rolls. Because why not? To do that, we have to go to the store. Because I don't have cream cheese or something else that I needed. I don't remember. I wrote it down anyway. We have to go to the store. This is the greatest thing. Do y'all remember when I said that my car was trapped here because of all the snow and crap? Well, it finally warmed up. Warm? It warmed up. <laughs> Warmed up. It finally warmed up to a reasonable point to where the snow actually started melting here in North Dakota and I'm very happy about that. So I previously had the big snow bound outside that I showed you. Look at this now. Look at that. Oh my god. No mo snow. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Very happy. Whirlwinds of leaves and whatnot. Best part is I can actually get my car out. So for the first time in five weeks, five weeks, okay, I can actually use my car. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle, okay? So we're gonna go to the store because I actually can and we're gonna get some stuff to make these cinnamon rolls. By the way, check out these awesome new shoes that JJ got for me. They are Skechers because the Converse was obviously bad for my back and he was like, you know what? These are gonna give you good support. They're athletic shoes. They have like a memory foam insert thingy and you know, they don't suck. And so far they are proving to be quite awesome. I really like them and I'm very happy that he got me out of the chucks if for only my back to stop sucking and they feel really good and they look cute. They look so cute, I love them. Follow me and my magical sketchers, you Reese's wrapper. And we're gonna go to the store. Oh my God, I missed my car. Oh God, did I miss the Koopa. I've missed you so much Koopa. I'm sorry that you've been trapped. And she fires right up. She, has, she sat here for freaking five weeks in the cold, not moving, not being started once. Boom, fires right up. I love this car. I love this car so much. It's very loyal and that's all I ask for. I'm very happy to have this car. Let's go get some stuff. Got my little basket. Got a point of cream cheese. There it is, cream cheese. Whoa, check this out. No, I've shot on cheese. Okay, we'll just stick with the plain English right now. Cream cheese. We need so many things from the baking aisle. What do we need from the baking aisle? We need bread flour. Where are you, bread flour? There you are, I found you. Bread flour. I need vanilla, powdered sugar, baking cocoa. You go, baking cocoa. Not for the cinnamon rolls, but just because I'm out and um, well, I'd like to have it on hand. <laughs> And lastly, we need some fresh cinnamon because you can't have wonderful, delicious, gooey, gooey cinnamon rolls without the fresh cinnamon. No, you cannot. You need the fresh cinnamon. I don't have fresh cinnamon, so I'm getting fresh cinnamon. What am I doing? All right, let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> we have gathered all the ingredients for our magic spell. We go home, we put all these ingredients together, very specific ingredients, very specific amounts of ingredients. We put them all together. Makes wonderful concoction of magical, wonderful, delicious things. Then it makes this beautiful thing at the end. The magic works together and blends, creates wonderful spell, very delicious and just, just, just very succulent. Then we eat it. Then we feel good, the magic spell, you see. We concoct a magic spell of specific ingredients. Makes this wonderful thing at the end, you know, it makes the thing, makes us happy. So this is a spell for happiness. These are the ingredients for happiness. Apparently the ingredients for happiness are powdered sugar, cream cheese, cinnamon, bread flour, and those of other things, whatever we put in. What am I doing? God. Oh, just ignore me. I'm just gonna sit here and savor this for a minute. 
This is the first time since like September that I haven't had to wear a coat and hat. I mean, it's chilly right now, but it's like fall chilly. It's not like 30 below and it's not snowing. <laughs> Like seriously, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, seven months, seven months of winter this year. And uh, <laughs> I forgot what the ground looked like. I forgot what rain was like. It rained the other day and I was like, what is this? What is this foreign substance falling from the sky? It's almost like snow, but it's wetter and warmer. <laughs> it just, oh my God, I can't even believe it. I know Houdini's behind me staring at me at the door. There she is. <laughs> She always does this when I come home. She sits there and sits at the door and stares at me and waits for me to come in. Oh, hey, baby. Oh, here come the neighbor's puppies. Oh, there's the neighbor puppy, please. <laughs> Barking little puppy. Who could that be? I hear a scrappy, but I don't see a scrappy. Where could he be? Oh, there he is! Hi! I know I was gone for so long. It was like ten whole minutes. What ever did you do with yourself? <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're making Mama dizzy. <laughs> He always does this. He always just wigs out and loses his mind when we come home. It doesn't matter if we've been gone for five minutes or five hours or five days. He does the same thing. You are so funny. Yes, hello, I see you. <laughs> yes, did you hear the neighbor puppies barking at mama? Yes, go get him. They're all just barking mad. <laughs> all right, so now we've got all of our crap. What did I even do with it? Oh, it's on the pool table. I'm getting stuff. All right, so we've got all of our ingredients. We've got all of our magical ingredients we are going to combine together to create something. <laughs> yes, delicious. Thank you. Settle down. You excited for the cinnamon rolls? Yes, are you excited for the cinnamon rolls? Houdini's <laughs> like, what the heck is going on? Yes, you need to settle down. Mama can't record videos with stuff with you barking and all that. She found my tidbits. And my car keys. Yeah, you gotta sit on the one thing that I bring home. You got this whole table and you gotta sit on the tidbits that I brought home. Yes, you funny little thing. Mama gets those for her crossword puzzles, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you just make that tidbits your home. I'm at least gonna take the keys. All right, you enjoy. Read the paper, report back. Oh my gosh, look who decided to join us downstairs for the first time in forever. Hey, Watson. She's still real skittish though. She comes down here and she like jumps at every little thing. She's really nervous. Hi, baby. Aww. I'm just having my lunch before I start baking. It's so nice to see you. Hi, little bear. Want some greenies? Aww. I think you should be rewarded for coming downstairs and saying hi. Let's have some greenies. Here you go. Let's have some greenies. These are so sweet. ASMR, cats eating treats. <laughs> All right, I've had my lunch and I've got my mise en place over here. I, I don't know what this is supposed to be, some kind of convoluted French, I suppose. I've got my mise en place. And if you don't know what mise en place is, it is actually French, maybe Italian, French, something. I think it's French, I don't know. I don't exactly know what it translates to, but basically it just means get all your crap together and get it set up and ready to go. Everything is its place so that you can just go from having everything all together. Then you can go from there instead of going and then pulling out everything as you need it and making more time and catastrophe for yourself. You just have it all ready, have it all ready to go.
And that's the biggest problem. I was talking to JJ about this the other day and I'm just like, you know, you see in the movies and TV shows and stuff like these people are baking or cooking. It's always baking. For some reason, everyone in movies has like the biggest disaster zones when it comes to baking. They're all fantastic cooks. They just boop, 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 flip around and they're just like Gordon Ramsaying all over the place. Like I can cook and look how fun it is. And it's a wonderful, happy time. Baking for some reason, nobody in the movies, TV shows, whatever, can do it without making a giant mess. You always see it. The entire counter is full of like ingredient bags and crap. And there's just messes everywhere. Crap stacked on top of each other. And they got like flour all over their head and they got their little apron on and they're just like all flustered and sweaty and their hair is a mess. And they're like, oh, baking. Oh God. Oh, bleh. and I'm like, Nobody actually bakes in this amount of chaos. Like, you know that, right? Like it's actually like 20,000 times harder to bake in a chaotic mess. Like, because mm, I just don't get it. Like it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me because when I bake, I pull everything else that I need and I sit it there. I use it, I put it back. You know, you have a little bit of downtime. It's not like cooking where you have to be on top of everything. You're stirring this, you're stirring that, you're checking the oven, you're adding this, you're doing this. Like baking, you have some downtime because you know, you wait, you wait, the mixer goes, you have like a minute or two to like put some stuff away or wipe up a mess or throw away something, right? Like the butter box or whatever, you know? And, and then of course there's the baking time. You put it in the oven, you got oh, a half an hour, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour to clean up after yourself. And I just don't understand. I mean, like, look, cinnamon rolls, minimal ingredients, right? It all fits on the, look how much counter space I have left, okay? So <laughs> it's just unfathomable to me that people in these movies just are in this midst of chaos trying to bake stuff and they're just like all flustered. I'm like, it's not as complicated as cooking because cooking, you you have to like multitask. Baking, it's like one cup of flour, teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of vanilla, one egg, you know, cup of sugar. I don't know what I'm baking here, by the way. That sounds like terrible proportions, you know? And then like, as you go, you know, you just put it back in the Lazy Susan because you're done with it. Like you just literally just scoop, put it away, scoop, put it away. Time isn't of the essence because nothing's cooking yet. You can let the dry ingredients sit in the bowl for a minute while you put stuff away. So I just don't understand the chaos. Anyway, mini rant over. Let's make these dang things. <laughs> So this is the recipe I'll be using. It's the best cinnamon rolls I'll ever eat, apparently. It is the best cinnamon rolls in the world. Big, fluffy, soft, and absolutely delicious. You'll never go back to any other recipe once you try this one. Well, I don't know about all that, but it's the only one that I found. I have like so many baking books over there. One of them had raisins and something, and I didn't like the glaze. The glaze was like a powdered sugar glaze. I really wanted the cream cheese icing. I feel like that's what makes cinnamon rolls cinnamon rolls, is the cream cheese frosting. You know what I mean? None of this powdered sugar drizzle shit. Cream cheese icing. Yes, that is what you want when you want a big gooey cinnamon roll, right? The other one, the first ingredient in a baking book, recipes, a book of recipes for people who are baking. The first ingredient was one pound of frozen bread dough. I read that out to JJ. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? He goes, yeah, at that point, why don't you just go buy the Pillsbury cinnamon roll thing and just make them that way? And I was like, or better yet, just buy cinnamon rolls. <laughs> like if you're, you know, if you have a baking book with recipes in it, oh, look, another mini rant. Ha -ha. You want to make the stuff. Like that's the point. You want to do it from scratch or learn how to do it from scratch or whatever. You don't use it like, oh my gosh, I have so many cake recipes I've seen in recipe baking books that are like first ingredient, one box cake mix. I'm just like, if I was gonna use the cake mix box, I wouldn't have bought this baking book to learn how to do it without the box. Like, uh, just, mm, it irritates me. Okay, oh, that, that, that. we're done, we're done ranting, we're done ranting. Okay, cinnamon rolls. So we need warm milk, which we have over there. It's not warm at the moment. It is there nonetheless. Don't judge me for my great value, low cheapo brand stuff. I don't care, it's the same ingredients. It's a cheaper price, it works, okay? I've never felt the need to go above and beyond for expensive ingredients. And you know what? Nobody's complained about my baking at all. It's not like somebody takes a bite of one of my delicious cakes or brownies or cookies or cinnamon rolls or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, it is great value. It's totally a great value instead of Betty Crocker or whatever a name brand thing would be. I don't know. Nobody said anything. It's still delicious. I don't care. So excuse my great value cheapo ingredients. I'm saving like $20 from getting like the cheap stuff. And as we've recently learned from Shane Dawson, it's the same darn thing anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, okay, so we got our milk. So we got our yeast too, which we're gonna be warming up the milk 
so that the yeast can dissolve in it and start to wake up a little bit. And then we're going to add some sugar to feed it. We have to feed it. So we wake it up with the nice warm milk, bring it to awareness, bring it up out of its dream state. And then we give it sugar. Sugar is its breakfast. It starts to eat. It yum, 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 yums on it. And I am not being metaphorical here. Yeast is a live enzyme and it does feed on sugar. And that's what causes the bubbles because once the yeast interacts with the sugar, literally eats it, it creates gases, which releases bubbles, which makes it expand, which is what makes your dough rise, which is what you do, you activate the yeast. That is the point. So in case you didn't know that, now you do. All right, let's see. And then we got two eggs. We got a quarter of a cup of butter there. We need three cups of bread flour. I got another one just in case. I don't have enough. And for future projects as well, we're going to need salt. And then for the filling, we're going to need the brown sugar, brand new cinnamon that we just got, another quarter cup of butter. And then for the frosting, that's going to be the cream cheese, three tablespoons of butter, powdered sugar, and vanilla. And then we have all of our measuring implements here and our dough hook. So I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to strap you to the tripod and get going. Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? <laughs> I really should tie my hair up, but truth be told, the closest hair tie is all the way upstairs and I just don't feel like it. All right, so I gotta warm up my milk for about 40 to 45 seconds. I'm fairly certain this, should, this is microwave safe, it better be. Let's do 42 seconds for good measure. So we gotta get our KitchenAid mixer out here. Fun! This is Archie, by the way. Archduke or Archbishop of Canterbury, Archie for short. He's my friend. We make lots of wonderful things happen together. All right, so dough hook when you're making bread. Very important. Do not use the paddle mixer when you're making bread. That's this thing. It will tear it apart. This is what you need, need it to develop the gluten. Very important. So we're gonna grab the milk. We don't want to burn the yeast. We just want to wake it up. We don't want to just like throw scalding water in its face and go, hey, wake up, welcome to the world, ha ha. We just want to be like, come on, come on, it's time for breakfast. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. That's what we want to do to the yeast. Cut to open the yeast. Be very, 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 very careful when working with yeast, by the way, because if you ingest any of this whatsoever, you're going to have the most nightmarish stomach ache of your life. Because again, it is alive. And if you get it into your stomach, if you ingest this, which is why don't ever eat raw bread dough either, same principle, it's gonna interact with the stuff in your stomach and it's gonna expand and grow and bubble and make you very, very, gas painful and it's gonna hurt and it's gonna suck. Like you're not gonna die, but you'll get sick and it will hurt and suck. So reiterating, be very careful. So if you get any grains of yeast anywhere at all, make sure you clean them up. You don't want your animals getting near it either. So we're gonna put our yeast into our mixing bowl thus. So now we're gonna pour the milk into the bowl, just like this. So we wanna add in the sugar now, which is gonna be quarter of a cup. You're gonna see it too. You're gonna see it start to bubble. Like, and you know, it's this is just the waking up stage. Once we give it the sugar, it's gonna start bubbling because it's gonna get gas. Okay, so we want a quarter of a cup of sugar. All right, there you go. Yum, 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 yum. Traditionally, I am not a huge fan of dumping all the sugar in at one time, but that's what this recipe says. I like to wake my yeast up before dumping everything into it, so I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute and let it do its thing, even though it says to add the eggs and butter in right now. Simply because I disagree, because I went to school for this shit, and I don't think this this lady did. Monique of AmbitiousKitchen.com. <laughs> so we're gonna let the yeast wake up a little bit. In the meantime, we gotta get our egg yolk separated, because we need one egg and one egg yolk. Why? I don't know, but that's what Monique is telling us to do, so that's what we're gonna do. To get my egg yolk, I go around the edge like that. Gordon Ramsay always just sticks his hand in there and just like grabs it with his fingers and lets it sift through. I am not all about that. That is not my cup of tea. I like to do the switchy pory thing because it's just, I don't know, makes me feel better about myself. All right, my egg yolk broke. That's fine. Just want to get that little piece of white out of there because ewey. Ew, egg snot. I hate that. I hate the egg snot. It's so gross. 
Okay, so we'll put the egg yolk over here. Throw that away. Always wash your hands after touching raw egg. Trust me, salmonella is not pleasant. I don't need the egg white for anything, but I'm just gonna put it over here anyway. All right, so we got the egg yolk, and then we got the egg. This is meant to be the next thing to go into the mixing bowl, as well as some melted butter. So I gotta get another bowl, do some melted butter, which I've showed you guys before, my tactic for the melted butter. Basically, open this guy up, get a knife, cut, 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 sides, open, this, there we go, side cut, side cut, side cut, side cut, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't matter, just break it up into smaller things so it melts a little bit easier, so, cube your butter, butter cubed, so I'm going to throw this guy in the microwave for a little bit, Little bursts of like 15 to 20 seconds is what I like to do. Otherwise, it explodes and makes a mess and a terrible noise. And you don't want that all over your microwave, trust me. All right, so you can see that the yeast is starting to bubble. The yeast is starting to get some gas. He's starting to bubble up a little bit, which is awesome. He's getting a taste of his morning meal. So yeah, we, we definitely got some bubbling, gaseous explosions going on in there while the yeast Feast. The yeast feast. That is what we're looking at right now. This is the yeast feast and that is what you want. You want the bubbles. <clears throat> I'm gonna give it just another minute while I keep trying to melt this butter and then we'll add some more stuff. All right, the butter is pretty well melted. That is what I would call a successfully melted bowl of butter. I literally just did one round, uh, 20 seconds for the first one, and then I just did it in 15 second increments until it was down to this. And I think I did like three 15 second increments after the 20 second one at the beginning. So it doesn't take that much and it didn't explode, which I'm very, very excited about. So it looks like our yeast is about ready to go. So I'm gonna add this egg yolk which didn't go all that well. Hold on. <laughs> I put you back up here so you can spectate properly without me having to hold you. I can't hold your hand through everything, my God. Okay, so egg yolk, egg. That was probably the worst egg crack I've ever done in my entire life. Definitely lost an eggshell in there. Or did I? Oh my God, did I? I can't tell. It looked like I did. Maybe not. Oh, I'm getting to feel around in my hand with what this, wow, this yeast feels pretty cool. It's actually really warm. Wow, okay, I don't think I lost an eggshell. It was just my imagination. Although I could have sworn I saw it go in there, but I don't feel it, so um, I have no idea. All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, so we got the egg in there. We got the egg yolk in there. Now we gotta add the melted butter and then we're gonna throw the dough hook in here real quick and get it going. All right, so melted butter, boom. Dough hook. Mix until well combined. That is done. Now we gotta add our flour and our salt. Very, very important. Do not ever forget to put salt in bread dough. Trust me, I did that once. It was bad. <laughs> okay, so we gotta do three cups of bread flour. I'm not fancy like baking shows and cooking shows and these fancy YouTube people with high production skills and ring lights and a whole set and like a camera crew and different angles and stuff. They already have their stuff all portioned out into like nice neat little bowls. Now I'm gonna dip from the great value bag and you're gonna be okay with it. Three cups of this guy. One. Two. And by the way, bread flour, uh, very important when making bread as opposed to all-purpose flour. You can, you can use all-purpose flour to make bread, but the gluten structure is gonna be different. Bread flour is denser, which is what you need to develop the gluten for bread products specifically. And cake flour is on the other end of the spectrum there. It is for cake specifically. Again, you can use all-purpose flour, but cake flour is much lighter. So it, it uh, gives the fluffier thing that you want when you make cakes and stuff, okay? So bread flour, I would say is pretty essential when making uh, bread products. Like I said, you can use all-purpose flour if you're not trying to impress anybody. I mean, it'll still bake and it'll still come out, but it's not gonna cooperate in the same way. And eh, it's just better to use bread flour if you can. All right, so now I need salt. Absolutely, definitely salt. Three quarter teaspoons of salt. What are you doing? Un, deux, trois. No cat, no cinq, no six. No, we stop at trois. <laughs> That's three. Okay, I'm supposed to stir this in with a wooden spoon until a sticky dough forms, but I've never heard of doing that in my whole life. I mean, I've got a dough hook. I'm gonna use it. Monique, I trust you, girl, but I'm gonna do it my way, okay? Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's a really, really nice dough. That's a really nice dough. That feels really great. Nice and sticky, but you know, it came together all right, so that's good. So now we're gonna knead this thing. Well, we're not going to, Archie's going to. Our friend Archie. Archie, I need you to knead this for me. I need you to knead it. I'm insane. It says it should be slightly sticky, which I know is true. It says if it's too sticky, meaning sticking to the bottom of the mixer, add two tablespoons more bread flour. Well, it's not doing that. It's actually perfect. It came out perfect because I'm perfect and Archie's perfect. And we know what we're doing in this kitchen. But if you run into that, that's, that's the tip. Add a couple more tablespoons of bread flour. Okay, and if you don't have a mixer with a dough hook, you gotta scrape this guy out of the bowl and put it on the counter and sprinkle some flour on it and you actually have to knead it for eight to 10 minutes. I'm sorry, but there's no way around it. You gotta do it. You gotta develop the gluten or it's not gonna come out good. Trust me. We're gonna knead this a medium speed for eight minutes. Well, Archie's gonna do it. So here we go. Okay, we have finished torturing this poor ball of dough. Looking really, really good. See how easily it slid off the dough hook there? So now we gotta let the sucker double in size. The way that we do that is we are very, very short people that somehow need to keep our baking bowls on the top shelf like crazy people and be really, really strong so you can bring down this whole thing in one go with one hand without making a racket. Look at how awesome I am. Okay, so I'm gonna take the biggest bowl, which is this monstrosity here, and we gotta grease this guy up so that this can sit in there and double in size without sticking to anything. So I like to use a little bit of olive oil. You can use Pam, you can even use butter, you can use canola oil, whatever. I prefer olive oil just because that's the easiest thing that we have on hand and it's in this little squeeze bottle. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here and then I'm gonna grab a paper towel and use that to just sort of go up the sides and around and make sure it's evenly greased, just like that. This is just to keep the dough from sticking to anything as it, as it expands, because it's gonna get sticky. And we don't want it sticking to the bowl. We wanna be able to dump it out of here in a nice, big, smooth piece. So I'm just gonna grab the spoon and make sure that I get this all in one piece here. And it is fabulous. This thing is beautiful. It's nice and not super sticky, but it's just sticky enough. Hey, there's that eggshell. I was right. Ha! Vindicated! My faux pas aside, anyway. So no, this dough is amazing. It's just like perfectly come together. It's the perfect amount of stickiness and pliable and everything. And it's really soft, which is great. So I'm sort of just forming it into like a ball so that it can rise well and just stay together really well. So I'm gonna put this in upside down first so I can coat the top and then I'm gonna flip it over so that the whole thing is coated. And we're just gonna stick it in there like that. Now, the way that I'm gonna do this, since I don't have a proofer, so I'm gonna grab some plastic wrap, cover this guy. This is to keep the moisture in, okay? So there is a reason for this. It's because you need moisture and warmth to proof dough which is exactly what a proofing box is. It is a big, heated, moisturized box, but I do not have one. So what I've done instead is I've preheated my oven to the lowest possible heat it will go, which is 170. I did 200 once before, but I was worried that was just a little bit too warm and I had the oven door cracked because I was uncomfortable with it. So if I preheated the oven to 170, lowest warmth that will go, I'm gonna put this in there. I'm gonna accompany it with a bowl of hot water. Put the bowl in there with it. That'll create the moisture. You already got the warmth. This will make the moisture. It'll make your dough rise like magic and it's wonderful. So we gotta let this rise until it's doubled in size. That's usually about an hour, could be an hour and a half, could be 45 minutes if you have the right atmosphere for it or environment, perfect ideal conditions. So it usually takes mine about an hour. So I'm gonna throw this in there with my bowl of water in my 170 degree oven. I'm not trying to pre-bake this. We don't want a crust forming on it. We just want it warm so it can rise. Okay, so I'm gonna put my dough down here on this side. I'm gonna put this bowl of water next to it over here. 
We're gonna make a little makeshift proving box out of that. And we're gonna check back on this, well, I guess at 1048 and see how she's doing. See, now we have a whole hour to dick off. There's no reason you can't clean up in that amount of time, which is what I'm gonna do. See you in a bit. All right, so it's been an hour and we're gonna look at our dough. All right, our makeshift proofing box here. Whoa, look at that. Look how big that got, holy crap. Yeah, this thing is definitely doubled in size and that's good. That's exactly what we want. We need to flour this surface. I have a French rolling pin here. It's thick in the middle and tapers off to the sides and there's no handles, so it's just better. All right, we gotta turn this sucker out. It smells so good. It smells all like yeasty and yummy. Oh my gosh. You know, this is exactly why we oiled the entire bowl so that this thing can just flop right out, just like that. Beautiful. I'm gonna flour this just a little bit on the top here so it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. Now we gotta roll this out into a rectangle about 14 by nine. So I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit by hand into more of a rectangle shape. Okay, so now we gotta spread the filling into this thing. So now we're gonna need our other fourth of a cup of butter here. It's gonna have to be softened, which I'm gonna melt it a little bit in the microwave so we can brush it better. And we're gonna need the cinnamon for this part as well. A brand new cinnamon. And we're gonna need the brown sugar. So this is gonna be a buttery, cinnamony, sugary filling here. And again, I'm sorry you can't look at my beautiful face and my awesome ghost t-shirt shirt and the cinnamon dough at the same time. Okay there, I sort of made allowances for you. This is awkward. This lady's got me messed up. She's talking about softened butter. I've only ever known melted butter to be a thing. So what I have here is a pastry brush, okay? You can still see what's going on, so I'm not depriving you of anything. So we got a pastry brush. Now this lady has got me messed up because she, this Monique, Monique is telling me to roll it this direction. I have only ever known cinnamon rolls to be rolled this way. And since this is supposed to be nine inches, it's supposed to get nine pieces, but I just never done it that way. I always roll it this way. I don't know, we're doing it the way that I know how to do it. I'm sorry, Monique. I'm sure that you're magnificent at what you do, but I'm doing what I was. So melted butter, pastry brush, right? It's not super hot. I just melted it to the point of where there were still a few little chunks of butter floating around in there, but it kind of, I let its own warmth melt the rest of the butter as it just kind of sat there. So I didn't just like nuke it, you know what I mean? And since we're rolling it this way, we gotta keep a little bit not buttered over here so that we can roll it and pinch it and squeeze it together and make a seam so that it stays together. It's very important. Could I just pour all this over? Yes, yes I could. Do I want to? Absolutely not. This is a lot of butter, by the way. <laughs> I don't know about all this. This is a lot of butter. I am not gonna use all this because this is kind of insane. All right, so we got our butter. I am not using all of that. We'll use that for something else. Maybe I'll make some toast. We need two thirds of a cup of the brown sugar, which by the way is also new to me. I've never ever heard of brown sugar being used in a cinnamon roll. It's always a combination of white sugar and cinnamon. So this will be interesting. My third cup measurement here and we do it twice. That's math. And then for the cinnamon, we need one and a half tablespoons. One tubby tubby. Boy, I'm gonna be tubby tubby after this. I like a little extra cinnamon, so I'm doing almost two. All right, so I'm gonna mix all this up. I think this is gonna turn out really well with the brown sugar, actually, because yeah, like I said, normally it's white sugar and cinnamon. I've never heard of brown sugar before. I'm sure it's more common than I realize, but yeah, I feel like it's gonna make it extra gooey and lovely. So, okay, we're just gonna sprinkle this all over the buttered portion. Try to get it as even as possible, do your best. Don't forget, avoid that inch up there where I already sprinkled some, just ignore that I did that. Just kind of pack it down. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going into a French cafe where some guy named Jacques Lapierre is going to like be judging the crap out of you or anything like that. According to this Monique, who is apparently the cinnamon roll god, we're supposed to roll this way. I'm not doing it that way. I, I know to roll this way and that is what we're doing. I'm just gonna grab this guy up. Boy, is that buttery. Oh man, that is so much freaking butter. I don't even know about this. Try not to make it as tight as possible. We gotta catch this big old croc. We gotta set a trap. Sorry, we've been watching a lot of the wild croc show on Netflix and it's kind of in my head. <laughs> Just roll that right up there. We're gonna make a nice 
cinnamon roll for you today. Roll it up nice and tight, and we're gonna pinch the ends. You gotta grab the end, bring it up like this. Try not to let the butter leak out like I already did. It's gonna be hard. And now pinchy, 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 pinch it some more. Just pinch it all the way across. It's not gonna hold the whole way across if you get it wet with the butter like I did. Just do your best. Now we're supposed to cut these in one inch thingies because we were supposed to do it this way, but I didn't have nine inches going on that way. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a little scoop, 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 scoop. I have the pan that I wanna use right here. It's a nine by nine cake pan and I'm gonna grease this guy. This time I'm just gonna use Pam. Just ignore me right now. All right, so now I gotta use a serrated knife. I'm gonna go for the Wustoff serrated knife. This is a very sharp knife, Wustoff. This is one of JJ's knives. So we gotta do nine pieces. So I'm just gonna cut the edges off. Look at that cute little roll. Look at that cute little roll. Oh my God. I'm gonna cut this edge off here. I'm not gonna cut my fingers off. We need nine. What we did in school was that we kind of went through and just made little indents to sort of see before we started cutting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is nine cuts, but that's 10 pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm confident I'm sticking with it. All right, that's one, that's one cinnamon roll. That looks awesome. I'm gonna put that in this pan and then I'm gonna line them up and I'm gonna show you once I'm done. These look so great. I love that, oh my gosh. Here they are in the pan. I think they look awesome. And they're, I think they're pretty evenly sized, which is really nice. Now, the thing about these, these need to proof again. So I went ahead and preheated the oven to 170 again. I'm gonna get a fresh hot bowl of water and do the same thing that we did before. I'm gonna cover those up with saran wrap, put them in the oven with the bowl of water next to them. And we're gonna let it proof for about 30 to 45 minutes again. And that's when they're gonna get, you know, how they look cinnamon rolly, when they grow and expand and all grow together in a big ooey gooey awesome mess. All right, here we go. Proof number two. Check on you guys later. All right, our cinnamon rolls should be proofed. And I apologize for the sound, but I'm running the dishwasher. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those are some very nicely proofed cinnamon rolls, if I do say so myself. Oh, that's just lovely. Oh, I just love it so much. Let's get these suckers out of here. All right, now we got to preheat to 350 so we can actually bake these up and make them real nice. I love how they're like square. I mean, I guess I didn't really expect anything else, but they definitely grew together very, very well. Time to bake. And sorry for the dishwasher sound if you can hear it. Uh, since I'm dumb and put my Archie mixing bowl in the dishwasher, which is still running, thankfully we have this backup guy. And we are going to use this to make the cream cheese frosting, which I'm gonna do real quick right now. And check this out. You know how I had some leftover melted butter? Well, it's solidified and I need, um, what is it? Three tablespoons of butter for this. What just happened? Oh my God, the milk solids have separated. Anyway. I'm gonna use that. I didn't know by brandishing the butter about it was going to do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my tablespoon scoopy guy and see if I can get three tablespoons worth out of this because it is still soft. Oh, it is very soft, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do one, two, about, this is about three, which actually works out pretty well. Yeah, that was just about three tablespoons of butter, so that actually worked out pretty well. All right four ounces of the cream cheese. This is an eight ounce package as we covered before. Cut it right down the middle. I feel like this is not gonna be nearly enough, but I mean, I guess we don't need that much dairy in our lives. I'm gonna put the vanilla in here, half a teaspoon. I'm gonna whip this up before I add any powdered sugar just to make sure it's mixed pretty good. So three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar. 
which I usually end up not using that much anyway because I don't like things overly sweet. It really comes down to consistency and taste. So I'm gonna do half a cup for now and see how that turns out because already this is blended pretty well. We got two minutes left on our cinnamon rolls. Actually, it looks pretty good. Very nice, let's try it. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. It's not quite as sweet. You can definitely taste the cream cheese, which is really nice. I'm just worried about the consistency at this point. Cinnamon rolls have one minute left. Let's do this. There we go. There we go, you guys. Yeah, those look fantastic. Okay, so we gotta let these cool for maybe five, 10 minutes before we can put the icing on them. And you see, you see how clean this whole area is? It's because I cleaned as I went. That's how you do it. Yeah, these look freaking awesome. Yeah, these look awesome. And the frosting looks awesome too. I cannot wait to throw the frosting onto these guys and taste one! All right, so we're gonna freaking ice these, frost these, whatever. They feel like a good temperature right now. Yes, you can use a knife, but I'm an overachiever and I have baking supplies and I'm not afraid to use them. At least the dishwasher finally shut up. I'm gonna take my blue rubber scraper spatula guy, and get all this gooey loveliness down into one spot and just deposit it onto here, just like that. I mean, crap, I could just use this, I suppose. Yeah, screw it, I'm just gonna use this. Wow, that actually is plenty. <laughs> I was worried it wasn't gonna be enough. I like a lot of frosting on my stuff. I don't know about y'all. It's getting real ooey and real gooey. I love it. All right, we're gonna use this guy to take over a little bit. Yeah, there we go. We can fine tune it in the corners with this guy. It's a team effort. All right, we just about got all of it. And here comes the cat. Perfect timing. Hi, Teeny. Yes, you're making cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was actually like more than enough. I was worried it was gonna be enough and it was actually more than enough, which is awesome. I could stand here and do this all day. I'm such a perfectionist, it has to be like perfect. Okay, we're done, we're done, we're done. And here is our thing of amazing freaking cinnamon rolls. Now, the lady, Monique, claims that these are the very best cinnamon rolls in the entire world. And if we try this recipe, we won't ever wanna try any other cinnamon roll recipe ever again. Let's see if Monique is telling the truth. First of all, I'm gonna show you above angle from the close up. You see what I mean? You can't see the swirls or anything, but that is definitely more than enough of the icing, which is great. It looks very adequate and I'm very happy with that. All right, y'all, there's only one way to determine if Monique is telling the truth about how good these really are. I think we all know what that is. I know it's terrible, it sucks, but I'm willing to make this sacrifice and take one for the team. I'm gonna have to eat one. So I guess I'll just do my best to dig one out of the corner here. I'll use my icing guy. <laughs> okay, that actually worked pretty well. I need leverage. Oh my God. Okay, I gotta show you this. Look at how perfectly that separated, like the distinction between this cinnamon roll's sides, you know, and those, like it just lifted right away. That is a good cinnamon roll. Oh yeah. I mean, in all fairness, I don't know if we can even call these cinnamon rolls. They're more like cinnamon squares. <laughs> they cease to be round once they grow together like that. But I think that we can overlook the technicality. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Mmm. I don't know if I'm mmming over the frosting or the cinnamon roll itself. I haven't really gotten any feeling yet. Let's see. Mmm. All right, I must admit I made these really well. I think the recipe is really good. It is good. Execution is everything. So if you follow my instructions, you will have success. This actually is pretty good cinnamon roll, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Mmm, I got to the gooey middle. It's 
actually pretty good. That cinnamon and sugar, mmm, it's quite nice. These are light and fluffy. We have ourselves a winning cinnamon roll, Monique. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. I did a couple of things different from you. I totally should have made a cup of coffee. I feel like I don't have enough coffee mugs. <laughs> yeah, I give this cinnamon roll recipe a thumbs up. I especially like the cream cheese icing. It's really good. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this vlog. I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. Hopefully, you learned something. And if you want to try your own cinnamon rolls, do it. I will post the recipe in the description below so you can follow it exactly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. It was really fun to bake with you guys. It's been a really long time. The only reason I've done it in so long is because I don't have any time, but tonight I had nothing but time. It's really helped make it go by. Thank you for hanging out with me. <laughs> I appreciate you. Don't forget to watch out for the sheep as always. And vlog phrase of the day is ooey gooey perfection. Mm, that was really good. <laughs> All right, see you guys next time. Love you. Okay, bye.